We're going to be reading coin market cap from top to bottom and then based on the squiggly <laughs> lines tell you if it's a good buy or not. We're going to start here with the uh, <laughs> 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 Although if you do want to see somebody read coin market cap top to bottom and tell you all about prices, we got that on our YouTube channel. Oh yeah. no, Kareem, they thought you were serious. Everybody's leaving. No, I was kidding. <laughs> oh man. That, that, that is definitely not what this show will be. <laughs> did a bunch of people leave all at once? I, I, yeah, I did notice some people leave, so they definitely. <laughs> They're like, and I'm out. <laughs> They're like, oh, that sounds awful. <laughs> <laughs> but look at this wiggly line yesterday. It was low, so it'll go up. <laughs> All right, so we'll uh Ooh, Ryzen is back. We can we can probably get get started and we'll have some people trickle in in a quick minute here. All right, so basically we are the Crypto Basic podcast and we're going to do our little weekly recap of the stories that we think are interesting in the our cryptocurrency subreddit. Doesn't mean that they're the best stories, doesn't mean that they're the only stories. Just means that when we went through, we were like, you know what? We'll talk about that. We will uh, do a little back and forth. We'll open up the floor for any questions you might have, and and then it'll get posted on YouTube. So that's uh, it's kind of the the formula for the last few weeks. Successful formula so far, I would say. Yeah, definitely been fun. I, cat, I have no FOMO 3D. Is that one of those pyramid scheme ones where it like? Uh, yeah, I think that was the one with the. The very recent one that actually like, got solved. Like legit, it's called FOMO 3D. Yeah. Is it like a satirical name? No, it's it, it's like that, that one where you have to like, if if it doesn't go off for a certain amount of time, it pays everything out. And I don't know, I, I yeah, I don't know what I don't know what happened, but it it is like basically just pyramid scheme programmed into code. But apparently, I don't know what round two ended means. Did so it paid out? Somebody got it? Yeah, well, I'm sounding like somebody somebody uh well i'm guessing there's a second round i don't know we'll figure we'll get to that in a minute <laughs> just google it and look at the url in description all right I i'm interested uh i will uh... Yeah, all right live on air Here, here's our, brent use it google you guys have peaked our interest exit scam dot me is the name of the, oh the url <laughs> <laughs> how did i not stumble across this when we were this is amazing <laughs> All the fun of an exit scam where you take everything. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, so this reaffirms FOMO 3D must be satirical then. I mean, like, as soon as I saw that name, dude, I'm like, who named? Who no, literally like, named their me. They, they're, they're 100% like, uh, like a very, it is a pyramid scheme. Like, that's what it is. It was programmed into the blockchain. So at least they're oh. not pretending it's not. Right. I think is this the one that you said would just it's like a smart contract where if it counts down to zero somebody wins or that yes. was a different right one. but it'll never hit zero basically yeah mm -hmm. although they right, said right. somebody yes, picked... the same one yeah oh my god that's crazy wait so I didn't know that there were winners I thought I was under the impression that it just kept going and going and going well no what I believe the initial one ended because somebody figured out a way to spam the network so nobody else could do the transactions oh and that happened a couple weeks ago I thought. And I'm guessing there must have been a second um, situation that happened. All right. Well, I, I we need to look up more about this project. Because we are not I mean, good at, at live breaking news. I promise you. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I love that they have rebranded to being comfortable with being a scam. That is, uh, that is awesome. Because that's what that that's how it should be presented. It should be presented that way. Yeah, I mean, okay, insanity. But all right, let's get to some stories. Yeah, let's actually talk about some of these stories that we're, we're going to be talking about here. I'll post this for you. All right. Too oh. late. Oh, <clears throat> just do it. One second. <laughs> okay. It's not the same no more, Brent. I know how to use a computer, too. All right. <laughs> so this is one of the highest voted stories. So, you know, of course, it's substantive and it's about something very serious. There was a question about... Bitcoin on who wants to be a millionaire. I want to make sure people can see the 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 options that were there. So it's cool. We're getting into some popular shows. I think there was a thing about us. There's a 
cryptocurrency thing on Jeopardy as well, I believe. Um, <clears throat> but anyway, mostly people focused on the option here, brick string. Brick string. <laughs> as opposed to blockchain. That sounds like it would be pretty cool. That was fun. But here was my favorite exchange, and I'll tell you why. I, I kind of loved it because I learned something, guys. There was an exchange here between... Uh, let me get the username real quick. Oh, jeez. Um, ah, yeah, yeah, I don't need the username, but here it is. Basically, somebody makes a joke. Oh, nobody's going to tell us what you picked, you know, whether she got the answer right. And somebody wrote, it's pretty obvious that the answer she chose was, and then you get that little, like, spoiler tag that's blank. <laughs> and if you click on it, it actually says, she chose Piconic. <laughs> but that then a bunch of people are like, wait, how did you do that? And then they go into breaking it down. Apparently, if you guys do, like, Inside arrow, like, like, you know, less than or the greater sign, but kind of facing inside like arrows and exclamation marks, you could do a little spoil. Yeah, I man. Yeah, you got to if you post in like any of the Game of Thrones subreddits or anything like that, you got to be real specific about when you use that markdown. But yeah, I mean, that's pretty cool. I didn't know how to do that. So there you go. Lessons in Reddit <laughs> browsing for the fam. That one's for free, guys. It's not part of our course, which you can sign up for. Just for nine, nine, nine. I'm just kidding. Yeah, we don't have a course. For one Bitcoin a month, we'll teach you how to use Reddit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway. Interesting, it's a $1,500 question. That means it's like way, it, it's not one of the like gimme like $100 questions in the beginning. I mean, that's fair, I think. All right. right? It's like, a, like, what is that, like the fourth question or something like that? No, I think it goes like one, two, three, four, five hundred. And I don't remember. It's been a long, I haven't watched it since Uncle Regis. Has been uh, <laughs> at, at, was the host. Yeah, that and the Indian kid that won like a million. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, after that, it's just not even fun. Was that the baller one that that used his lifeline just to call his dad or something? Well, no, was, that was, was the first guy. Slumdog millionaire. I was just, but you know. Oh, no, the the first guy that won the million like knew all the questions, and when he got to he the called his dad. he he yeah. called his dad as a lifeline. The last one, he's like, "Yeah, I don't need your help. I just want to tell you, I was going to win a million dollars." <laughs> and then and did it. That was like, awesome, boom. dude. That was that was a bike drop moment. I thought that was good. Oh, dude, yeah, so baller. <laughs> hmm. Yep. Anyway, that's it. One of the cool stories. Mass oh, adoption is coming. Bullish. Very <laughs> bullish. Who wants to be a millionaire? Who I'm wants to be a millionaire? Buy Bitcoin. I'm bullish on blockchain, Bitcoin, brick string, and I'm definitely bullish on Reddit <laughs> lessons. So. <laughs> On to the next one. All right, guys. Right, this one, I didn't want to dig too deep, but I, I found something particularly interesting in this article. And uh, it was titled, Bitcoin is 300 times cheaper than wire transfer. Banks take 83% of the profit. And as I was I was going through the, the explanation here, they said the, the Fed wire apparently is the official real-time gross settlement funds transfer system that's operated by the U.S. Federal Reserve Bank. So I, I'm not really all that familiar with the financial industry and how all that works. But apparently <clears throat> they, tell, they, they break down the story that Bank of America charges, you know, $30 for an outbound and like $35 for inbound. Uh, wiring fees, but it only costs them 25 cents to make that transaction. And they're just, they're just piling on fees the, the most of the rest of the way. And I guess that it never dawned on me that their options were so efficient. And my question to you is one guys, do you think that this uh, make crypto less needed by big banks or something that is going to create a much m longer resistance period or do you see this as, you know, just part of an inevitable takedown in a way that you th that you think that this doesn't change anything that you viewed it on? I think a All part right. of the reason that, oh, uh, you know what, Kareem, I want to go first, Kareem, because what you're going to say is going to sound a lot smarter than me. So <laughs> uh, I think a lot of the reason they charge so much on these things is there is some uncertainty in the settling process. Like, they aren't 100% certain that the funds are where they say they are until it's settled. And they still give credit for them on wire transfers quicker. So, I think they have to offset that in some way. Kind of like when you swipe your debit card, I guess. And sometimes you overdraft. Like, there's... That's paid by the bank. And then they charge an overdraft fee to cover all the times that somebody, like, disappeared on their overdraft or whatever, right? 
So I think it's similar. Um, it also shows you just how much more efficient cryptocurrency can be. Obviously, this number's a little bit skewed because um, we can, like, once you've sent via the cryptocurrency, you also have to pay some fees to get it back into fiat if you need that right now. So until cryptocurrency is used as in and of itself to be spent on things, there's still more fees that are going to be incurred on the person side, but it's still cheaper. So, you know, yeah, you, you could see what banks are doing on this. Yeah, and all I would add, honestly, is that the it kind of plays with what Brent is saying, where I think that that $0.25 cent number and that $30 number are selective figures. Like, when somebody says, oh, it really only costs them to do, you know, $0.25 cents to do that transfer, well, then they're probably really being very selective about how they measure that cost, and they're not taking into account whether or not the bank has any – know your customer laws or multiple you know jurisdictions to deal with whether you know the bank's normal overhead that we would be calculated as part of business expenses i'm definitely not defending the banks and it wouldn't surprise me at all if they're overcharging i'm just saying that taking this specific number and saying oh on a 30 dollar transfer that they're charging you it really only cost them 25 cents unless they explain how they arrived at that number my assumption is they're being very selective and it's not very meaningful Yep, I agree. My uh, my my favorite comments, Matt. Um, the first one was from Brimish, where basically he was saying in Canada, Interact is is very cheap. Inter account basically like wire transfers, and, and essentially saying like what is what is the you know conversation here? And uh, the response from from Joe Strombo Tromboni, uh, it's what rich people do. We don't have to worry about things like this. We'll just keep sending two thousand to the landlord for rent. Uh, if you're only you're not a rich dude, if you're paying two thousand a month in rent to a landlord, you just think you're rich. The real rich people pay it all up front, and it's like fifteen k a month for their mansion. So, so get your richness right, Joe Tromboni. What? I have no idea what what type of response you just had there. It's He's basically saying you don't have to worry about wire transfers because we're poor people and we just pay rent to the rich people. Oh, oh, I thought he was saying he was rich. Oh, my God, I totally ruined it. I didn't understand that at all. Uh, all right. Well, I I think Brent has done, you know, you're done with that little thing, right? Yeah, so yep. go right ahead. Here. Hey, Kareem, what else do you got for yeah, us? Yeah, I killed it. Took uh, care of business. <laughs> well, you know, it, it was – we're having a little bit too much fun with it, Brent, so we deserved it. All right. Anyway, Congress. This was one of the titles. Congress launches bill to update cryptocurrency tax guidelines. Finally. All right. Hopefully yeah. that gets done before October 15th because. <laughs> Except we've already talked about the problem with sensationalized headlines. Oh, no. <laughs> no. Oh, no. Oh, you, they got me. <laughs> Okay, here's the situation. Number one, this wasn't even a link to an article. This is part of the reason I had a little bit of an issue with it. It's a link to just like someone's tax law offices that they just like it's like literally <laughs> a business website. And they're just kind of mentioning that this one congressman submitted is trying to get three uh, bills passed in relation to cryptocurrency. But it doesn't say anything that he's got any kind of like legit support at this uh at this moment you know uh hold on a second profits yeah that was uh on how to report losses that was one of the best comments on there nice for sure um <clears throat> but anyway what was interesting is what the bills they're trying to propose so i actually kind of went through a little bit and the congressman that they mentioned is trying to pass two specifically the regulatory certainty act which makes a lot of sense and it would say things like um, if you're never in control of funds, you're not a wire transfer. So an example that would be miners, right? Because the, the tax law is so confusing right now and they don't understand cryptocurrency that they're trying to blanket miners as kind of serving the same role as something like PayPal, which they're obviously not, right? So that's one of the bills. And the other bill I really liked is the Safe Harbor for Taxpayers with Fort Assets Act. And it essentially says that until 
the IRS gives the United States, uh, the U.S. citizens a clear and concise way, how should we report this? That we can't be penalized for, as long as you make an effort to disclose your assets, you can't be penalized for not disclosing them right. Yeah, th I mean, th that would be beautiful. My, my, I know my tax situation is super weird. Uh, I, I think I'm doing it right, but I did a, an extension hoping that we were going to get some more clarity on this. We never did an episode on Taxes 101 because we didn't feel comfortable presenting any of the information that we had for taxes as if it was fact. I even asked an IRS agent about this. I am friends with one, and he couldn't give me any guidance. Like, it is very, uh, very murky and definitely needs some regulatory clarity. Yeah. <clears throat> anyway, so the acts are cool. I like the intention. It was most definitely not Congress launching bills, and it's not <laughs> an article. <laughs> and, as usual, boys and girls, don't pay attention to how I actually have a way to make, I think, an interesting conversation out of this. Um, what What are the tax implications to to actual physical miners that – mine like gold or diamonds or other things like is there any is, is there any like i don't understand i just wouldn't have any idea what the the governing body looks like there no i'm sure that they have you know because more than likely those uh people engaging in those activities are just part of uh corporations they might yeah, they're just getting paid to it. tax breaks or not breaks <laughs> depending on you know whatever local laws or whatever something that their industry lobbied for but more often than not they're just gonna tally up their expenses you know take in their revenue put up their sales have profit do all the normal corporate tricks this is just brand new uh and they're gonna have to i i think i know where you're going with this where it's like you could put them in a similar category but, well, you know, the miners in particular, they're acquiring an asset through labor, basically. And, like, I don't know what you – like, if I took a metal detector and, like, walked the beach and I found, like, something valuable, like, what, I don't know if I'm legally, like, obligated to pay on that. I'm assuming not. You are. But what is it – what's that? Well, I mean, obviously, th that's an extreme example. Because yeah. It's, it's, it's a tiny thing. But, for example, if you have an expedition – in the ocean where you find a sunken european ship that has literally money and stuff in there a, the portion portion that's taxable income wherever you're a citizen for most countries right but right now kind of what they're doing what they're what it feels like they're doing with miners is a lot of times you mine say like raven coin and then you immediately turn it into bitcoin and then get that that's technically a taxable event right now. So it's the same thing as like if you're a miner and you were like mining the gold, you get taxed because you picked it up and moved it over to the barrel and you had it in your hands for a little bit. And if it changed value between when you picked it up and when you put it in the barrel, you get taxed on it. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. We can't we can't be taxed on every entry point and exit point. It doesn't make sense. We're gonna have to um I don't know what the right tax guideline looks like, you know. There's a lot of smart people. Um, we just uh, recorded an episode with our editor where we were talking about the different implications of charging too much tax or tax in situations where it doesn't matter, like it doesn't make a whole lot of sense, right? Because he's from he's from Greece, and it what it does is it forces people to kind of go under, like it, if you're being taxed in a bunch of ways that make no sense, you're gonna avoid the taxes. If you're being taxed in a way that makes sense, you're gonna pay the taxes. So it's like very. Interesting the, fine line. The specific example he gave Brent was that there was a tax in Greece that even if you're just earning, like you have a part time job, let's say he just gets like a hundred bucks a week, week or something somewhere, that he has to incorporate as a business and pay all the filing costs of a corporation up front just in order to get that side hustle, which obviously makes no sense. And right. here in the United States, it's obviously much easier where you could just like be a contractor or W two or self employed and you still have to pay a lot of taxes because you have to pay your own social security and Medicaid and things like that. I mean, uh, yeah, you have to pay your own taxes as, as self-employed, but it's not the upfront cost that he was saying, which basically encourages people not to look for side hustles, which hurts the economy. Yep. 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 Anyway. Tax taxes are interesting. So one of the articles that I found, um, started off by saying, 
62% of Americans already view media as biased and immediately, you know, because we are somewhat in the media industry and we, uh, you know, this was one of the highest self-voted things. I decided to check it out. So the fact that it said 62% of Americans view it as bias, I honestly thought that that's really low. And it's really sad that that's probably the reality, but you know, everything's biased and, and this, you know, this is going to be a quick lesson and a couple of quick reminders about, you know, what, what is actually going on. Um, you know, part of the problem was that, uh, America's biggest media companies, they're owned by these billionaires with a ton of different interests and a bunch of different industries. Um, the article also goes on to say that part of the problem is that beginners are getting access to platforms such as ourselves. Like we have a podcast and we are completely beginners in an industry, but we're learning along the way. A lot of people on YouTube and, you know, podcasts and other types of blogs and whatnot, they're showing a lot of expertise as people that are not experienced. And that's part of an overall problem in the media industry. Uh, and basically, you know, along with that, how advertisers and the monetization process has forced different types of creators to create content or change their stuff in a different type of way. You know, we, we hear about clickbait titles in order to get, you know, greater shares and views and whatnot. And, you know, and last but not least, it, it touched on it as a reminder about the Facebook and Cambridge Analytics scandal and how, you know, much manipulation can exist and how big of an impact it can have through the large media corporations. Um, I was hoping to find more cryptocurrency content in here. Honestly, it just was shilling a bunch of shit projects that I didn't feel um, had necessarily earned my respect or my willingness to share, but I'm sure a couple of them will be great. I'm sure several of them will be, be awful, but I, I thought that that was worth checking out. So Mike, when I hear, you know, this topic makes me think a couple of things. I have mixed feelings, right? Uh, on the one hand, I agree with the idea that, you know, one of the big problems we have in the, for example, at least in the U S I can speak for sure is that, you have very few companies, big companies that own all of the all of the media. So it looks this like is dangerous to our democracy. Yeah, that video mm. was super trippy, right? You have Sinclair yeah. Broadcasting that just owns all of these local TV stations, and then, but the same thing goes for all the major networks, right? CNN, uh, Fox News, ABC, NBC—they're all owned by bigger companies that have broader interests, and the influence of advertisers like you mentioned mike is a huge problem i remember i don't remember the specific story but uh i remember i was telling brent back in the day that advertisers have so much power when it comes to the news and then we learned that in a show that we liked and i don't remember what it was but literally they were planning on doing an episode about a sketch and an advertiser caught wind that it would make like their industry look bad so they, they were able to kill the episode before it was even filmed so they know literally what even comedies. Oh, you know what? It was an episode of uh, what? What's the not the MythBusters, but yeah, yeah. Um, I think that's what it was, yeah. right? Yeah, it was MythBusters. Yeah, it was MythBusters. Yeah, <clears throat> they were gonna do something, and they I think credit card companies or something were literally able to shut it down before the episode was even filmed. Look at that level. See, MythBusters creativity. not immutable. That's unreal. Exactly. It's so now it's not even like, oh, okay, advertisers are controlling your nightly news in order to influence your vote. It's like advertisers are controlling the comedies, the dramas, the historicals, the nature shows. So it just gets a little bit ridiculous. And I think that that is scary. The only thing I will say on the flip side of this story is yes, the fact that people like us can get a podcast and there's YouTube channels and that there's all these Reddit things, it means that we can start to fight against that a little bit. And I think that blockchain can be a next step in that fight, but it also means that it's easier to encapsulate ourselves in bubbles of information, which make us more isolated, more polarized. I mean, it's crazy. You can have a conversation with somebody that lives a block away from you and they have a completely, totally different reality, both internationally, domestically, uh, from technology, what the problems in our society, everything, everything. You could just have totally different uh, realities right now because we have all this fragmented media. Yeah, it also creates Ty Lopez. You know, like you have you have people who have absolutely no expertise in anything, but they go out rent like a bunch of Lambos and tell you to, you can get rich and like 
there, there's the equivalent of that in cryptocurrency, I'm sure. Like, I guess, like the Ian Bolinas or things like that. But, um, or Ty Lopez. <laughs> yeah, I get, he did get into BitConnect there, like right in the end, yeah. I remember. Yeah. Yeah, the uh, Ty Lopez of crypto is Ty Lopez. <laughs> <laughs> I, I remember, like, I have a friend who went to dinner with Gary V and he was, like, all excited about it. And, and he, like, messaged me about it. And I'm like, dude. Uh, this doesn't excite me. I'm not excited that you're going to dinner with this guy that I think is like a complete, you know, turd. But uh, yeah. Well, anyway, the 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 point the point I think that we're making here is just like the Congress bill to update cryptocurrency, like tag. You have to realize clickbait is the thing. We do it when we release our YouTube up episodes. I put some ridiculous title on there because I want people to click on it. I put capital letters. I put a stupid picture of a ketchup bottle in the in the picture because, like, all of the analytics say you have to do that. So if you realize that everyone has to do that, you have to get past it. That's why it's so ridiculous. Even in our cryptocurrency, the ones that get upvoted, people will read the title, upvote. The, they like what's in the title, the content, without going in and reading the article. You read the article; it's very different from the title. So, um, I, I know we've discussed this before, but and and this is not like a flimsy attempt to tie it to crypto, but like legitimately, this is an area where I'm really, really hopeful that crypto can provide something actually useful. I don't know which. I know there's a million projects that are trying to address like the idea of authenticity, yeah, ontology, civic, or, those kind of projects. Yeah, exactly, identity, but. Like, if we can take the internet, which has been obviously such a boon for humanity, right? But if we could just create a little bit more trust and certainty uh, when we're navigating the internet, that that would, I think, have tremendous value, you know? Yeah, I, I agree. Trust but verify. If there was a, you know, there, I, I there's going to be a reputation system that is you know, on par with, whatever re reputation system you agree is good when you're looking at say a, a hotel or a restaurant or whatever there. And there's also going to be ones that aren't, there's going to be the Yelps. There's going to be like the, the projects that start good, create ratings and then make it so that you can pay to get rid of bad ratings and that kind of thing. So um, just do, do your research on the projects as they come out, realize that identifying real people, real articles, real content, that doesn't have a bias is really important on the internet. It's going to be more and more important as we go forward. You know, we know in the U.S. that CNN and Fox News have their biases. Most people know that. They understand that. But it's not as obvious when you click on an article on Facebook where that bias came from. And unless you do the next step research and find out, like, oh, where does the Daily Mail lie on the spectrum? I they seem like they're good and they're totally not biased. And then you look and you're like, oh, shit. Okay. Yeah, they're they're over there. All right. <laughs> Do your so research. Guys, in other news, did you hear? Oh, here we go. The ripening happened for like 12 minutes. Ripple. Oh. Ripple. 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 Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I got yelled at my Autobot. Good bot. Good bot. Good bot. I would like to keep, Brent, keep Crypto Basic Brent in line. That is a good bot, man. All right. So, now that Brent is not spamming the chat anymore. Full disclosure, it did it to me as well when I when I came and uh, I put it. I said, let's get ready to rumble. And it's like, stop spamming. I'm like, all right. <laughs> Oh, I thought it was just because we brought up Ripple. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. So, <laughs> all right. So, this was one of the big posts. Uh, Ripple overtook Ethereum as number two overall for large, largest market cap. Um, little drama in the in the um, in the chat thread, of course. Uh, one person. I thought this was a lot of fun. This guy, a guy named Zero Fader. He was on all caps. He was like, I'm trying not to FOMO, but it's so hard. And then, like, the community came in trying to be like, don't do it, man. Don't do it. Don't do it. Blah, blah, blah. So I wanted to put a little game for you guys. Don't go to CoinMarketCap to check. Here's the question. Zero Fader, three days ago, wanted to invest in Ripple at $0.59 cents in order to keep riding it on the way up. The question I have for you, boys, is would that have been a good investment? 
I've already looked, and I think Mike yeah, has also we, looked. Already, so I haven't looked, but Brent volunteered to me that that Ripple is one of the biggest losers today. Yeah, they're they're back down below fifty cents. So yeah, it, thank God, <laughs> thank God. <laughs> All right, so the so the the top comment for me was, and it's gone <laughs> because yeah. of course it's like the best meme ever. And then also a personal one for anybody that has listened to the podcast knows I love this. Somebody wrote Vitalik. Not clapping. Not clapping. Not clapping. <laughs> anyway, here, I'm, I'm going to give him the full credit that he deserves. Vitalik clap. Vitalik no clap. Yeah, that, that was user Hornberry HS. <clears throat> Fantastic names. I love Reddit. I really do. Look, we, right. we make fun of we make fun of Ripple all the time, but we've we've absolutely said that Ripple is uh, a project worth looking at. It just isn't along the lines of like the the radical decentralization that were uh, of like a Bitcoin. It just is like a company. So, you know, that it's, uh, it, it was, it was interesting to watch it go to the moon. One of the things that I, and I don't know if this is just confirmation bias, but we, we noticed for a period there when we were really going through those moon shots that it kind of went down coin market cap. It's like whatever the coin that's like less than a dollar the next super cheap coin per coin was like the next moonshot. And a lot of those coins, a lot of the like Sia coins and the like were the ones that were kind of appeared to be the beneficiary of people taking their profits out of Ripple and reinvesting them somewhere else. Like they were taking it out of Ripple and going to like the next three cent coin down the list. And I, I noticed that during Which the day. Also played a big role in Cardano as well, in my yeah, opinion. Yeah, yeah, Cardano was one of the recipients, too. I, I, they, Despite them being one of our favorite projects overall, I think that they were a small beneficiary mm-hmm. of this. So, so for all you technical traders out there, you haven't, you haven't quantified what I know, and it's that people go, all right, I got some profits. What's the next cheapest and hottest? And they scroll down CoinMarketCap and find a coin that is like three cents, and they're like, oh, yep. That's going to be 10,000 sometime soon. Time to invest. So this whole this whole tangent seems like a gross overgeneralization. But it, of course I'll, it is. I'll allow I'm talking it. about trading. I'll allow it. <laughs> anyway, wh- what's this bank related thing we got here? Oh, so so it was related to Ripple. So I was I was looking around and <laughs> one of the one of the uh, one of the top posts I'm going to get the picture rather than link the post. Give me a second here. Um, was this where they're like, downloaded a wallet, got a bank instead. And they posted this like picture of Ripple where I, I didn't look into this, but apparently you have to have at least 20 XRP in your wallet in order to keep the wallet running. And they, so it, you have to have a minimum balance and you can never spend your minimum balance, which sounds exactly <laughs> like a bank. And... And it was funny because, you know, Ripple is banks or whatever. But really, that's there to prevent, like, network spam. And I understand why it's there. And uh, a, a couple of the related topic was normally, if you shit on Ripple, there are a lot of comments that are all, like, agreeing with you and also shitting on Ripple. Not as many as usual. Uh, our cryptocurrency is getting a little bit uh, warm to XRP and Ripple Labs. So. Uh, but my favorite, uh, my favorite comment, and I'm only this is only a favorite because it's um, it's so like wrong. Oops, hang ah. In Brett's opinion, hold on, I'm trying to. Well, no, no, no. This is. I, all right, I can't get this to post, but it, uh, it was from uh, Millen Thin Air. Been holding since 20 cents last year like a dumbass. I didn't sell it $3. Kept thinking Coinbase is coming. LOL. Uh, <laughs> Coinbase is not coming. Unless, <laughs> look, when when Ripple is going to be added to Coinbase, XR, I, I know I'm saying Ripple. I understand the difference between Ripple and XRP. When it's going to be added to Coinbase, there will be a very clear signal that it's going to be added to Coinbase. Because right now, according to their terms, conditions, and what they look for in new assets, it is never going to be on Coinbase. Because it is it does not pass their test of decentralization. So they will not put it on there. Until they change that, and they may change that. 
But until they do, there is zero chance of XRP being put on One of two things there. need to happen. Either, either Coinbase would need to change their criteria, which if they do, then that could happen. Or Ripple would need to change the way that they're structured. And that could happen, I suppose. And I know they've made some steps towards decentralization, but you still can't get past the fact that they control most of the supply. So it is not... Uh, it is not very clearly like I, I normally we just say opinions and we're not sure. I am certain that without changing the terms and conditions that Ripple will not be added to Coinbase. And I highly doubt they add and change terms and conditions at the same time. So there will be a clear signal, almost like a warrant canary on a VPN. Like it'll just change and then you'll know, Whoa! oh, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. And then you get all excited. <laughs> <laughs> there we go you heard the prediction here the one and only crypto basic brent now you know when ripple will be added gotta look for that change all right so that's 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 enough talking about our one of our favorite coins the xrp uh <laughs> and we do actually have a lot of respect for the stellar platform but by the way that would be um Similar enough to XRP, but not doing quite all the same things. Uh, so, you know, anyway, just the right. uh, difference. I got to change tone of tune for you guys. We have a little segment on our podcast called Crypto Around the World. And then when we were going through the top post of the week, I saw a theme. So we're going to have a little our cryptocurrency adoption around the world segment here. Uh, we're going to start out with turkey so we got an, an image from turkey right here where uh they're selling it's basically it looks like a store at a mall where they're selling like ledgers and apparently you could buy and sell cryptocurrency uh one of the top comments on there was uh user jason coke pointed out that tether can actually be a really attractive purchase in those countries just because for a lot of people it's going to be cheaper to buy tether than it is to buy dollars because exchange uh mm. exchange great places charge you such an arm <clears throat> and a leg right yeah so if you if you have and here's another thing that he mentioned <clears throat> the lira which is the uh turkish currency has been steadily declining so i actually have that for here uh for you guys so that we could see a trend um that's the mm. lira in relation to the dollar you could see it's been declining damn so it was near 1.0 at one point and now it's way down there so the next well it, it looks like it peaked at like 0 0.8 yeah so, oh, it's so, hard to see but well, we're splitting still hairs. we're splitting hairs it's okay so second <clears> thing <throat> argentina was the second post. uh I, i'd like to make a comment about this this picture on turkey real quick um Go ahead, let's do it. they also are selling like looks like those little commemorative coins in there which is interesting uh and also I would be extremely, extremely worried about a random ass little corner store selling ledger nanos. <laughs> like, I, yes. I would be very, very worried about yeah, no, what may have happened have to, to those. See, so, ledger nano, I remember they do have authorized dealers, so you would have to make sure it's an authorized dealer that everything's sealed, of course. But yes, I agree with you. That's like for the same reason we wouldn't buy something off of like eBay. But yeah. I am sure that they have authorized dealers. You would just have to check. Uh, all right. Our second entry here is a butcher shop in Argentina. Um, the person who uh, had one of the most interesting comment to me as far as this pattern that we see uh, is from Argentina. His name is user Carlitos Sagan time. So freaking awesome name. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, is that a reference to something or you just like how it sounds? Uh, well, Carlitos, obviously, it's just his name is probably Carlos, but Sagan time, like Carl Sagan, I'm assuming. I don't know. It just sounds cool. Carlitos Sagan time. So anyway. <laughs> that did that did not deliver. Yeah. No, it, it's just a Spanish sounding name. And Kareem's like, <clears throat> no, if, if you're not, you're not, if you're not a fan of Sagan, that wouldn't deliver. If that was blah, 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 Rick and Morty or something, you're into it. So you'd be like, oh, that's. Yeah. Amazing. But if, it, but if it's, if it's but written. If it's well, Rick and Nugget right in now, Stein, please. Morgan Stein, uh, and you're like, see, Rick and Moore, there's an MOR. And. <laughs> Can you do a single comment link? You know, I should. I should. Can I? Yes. Can, you like, click permalink. Yes. 
permalink. Donde? Hold on a second. I got I got to go find the comment. Hold on. I'll get him. But That's anyway, he talks about Argentina <clears throat> being – he's proud of the fact that he's from Argentina and Argentina showing up. I'm looking for the comment right now, by the way, Elliot. I am going to bring it to you. Um, but he also mentions that the Argentinian currency has just been getting crushed. This was posted by – oh, yeah, that's the third option. We're not there Tivo. yet. Spoiler alert. Wow. Tivo, pause. Tivo, pause. No, it's okay. Get out of our head, Tivo. <laughs> Reading us like Tivo. All right. So. <laughs> yes. uh, you, know, you almost did Call it. back. You missed an exclamation mark there, Tivo. Okay. So the same comment, though, about Argentina, that the Argentinian peso has been rapidly declining. and this, But this was also shared independently from there this week. And as Tivo shared, we had also in Venezuela another shop that has started accepting um, Bitcoin. This is actually a picture of the Redditor right here and the owner of the, of the butcher shop. And he actually said that his plan is to – he's trying to give free Wi-Fi for Venezuelans to come over there and start creating wallets so that he can start creating some uh, adoption. So we have three different – Three different countries, uh, Venezuela, Turkey, uh, Argentina, to different extents for different reasons. But you see a depreciation of the currency leading to people seeking out these alternatives. Yep. And this is still kind of early on. This is exciting. I don't know. Just seeing all three of them on the same week from so many different places, it just started feeling like the trickle that can become a flood. You know, this is, we've said this so many times on the show. We don't give a shit about ETFs back to whatever. It's cool. Mm -hmm. These are not the things that are going to drive the actual mass adoption of it becoming a currency, becoming ubiquitous. These things are. The little butcher shops that are taking it and helping people learn about it. Like the the small communities that need cryptocurrency as a way to help themselves in these areas are the ones that are going to drive the mass adoption, not the big banks in the United States. Like be the change you want to see in the world. Yep. Mm -hmm. This is this is where this is where it becomes less speculative and more real. This is when it's <clears throat> not just a bunch of I don't know what do you want to call them, moon boys or or bankers or whatever. Like this is the exciting stuff. This is why I've always been excited about how Dash has been like really pushing itself in Venezuela, trying to help. Or, you know, Nano was part of helping the communities there. Like, that is where you want to see when you're a person who literally is wiping their ass with currency and you're like, oh, like this one, I wouldn't have to do that. This one would be really good compared to my currency. And, yeah, you're making a you're making a choice. To, to Venezuela, there is no crypto bubble. To Venezuela, it's like they're still going to the moon. Yeah. Now, you know, not to mention that it also provides the population a way to indirectly remove power away from a uh, oppressive government. You know, like the fact that these people can have an economy independent of the deflationary practices of Maduro. Like it just yeah, gives or, them or an Erdogan or however you say that guy's name. Erdogan? Er er Erdogan. Er er oh, yeah. Erdogan. I don't know how to pronounce it, actually. Yeah. But th that's the point. Like. It's it's a nonviolent way of peacefully resisting and taking power away from that regime, and that's that's an awesome thing, even right there, you know. Yep. So the, I, I I'm not familiar with the politics of Argentina, but clearly, uh, Turkey and Venezuela are two places that have um, very odd, oppressive governments and leaders that are not particularly well respected and possibly with good reason. Like I wouldn't be surprised if the Philippines or another are another location where this starts to take hold. Uh, you know, so um, I, I'm sure North Koreans, if like they understood how the internet worked, would be all about crypto. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't even know if they have the infrastructure to, or the wealth. No, there's, but you know what I'm saying? Hey, listen, right I, I watched that vice documentary. They were totally on Google, just like everybody else. Oh Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they, oh, okay. they're just on the google <laughs> brent is referencing this crazy scene so vice had a special when they went into north korea with, with dennis rodman <laughs> yeah okay so watch it's, it it's, it's awesome totally worth watching but there's this scene 
where the vice crew is walking into a quote unquote office where a bunch of people are sitting staring at a computer screen, but it's clearly not a real computer and it's like a cutout of the Google screen and they're all just staring at it. Nobody's typing, nobody's doing anything. <laughs> Only one real computer in the whole room and wouldn't you know it, it's the guy. Oh, look at that. Somebody. God, I love you people. The internet is the best. <laughs> yes, yeah, that one. Yeah, that's the Always. one. But anyway, so one computer works and it's like one guy that can actually google stuff and he's like the only one no he's not googling he's just on google.com like ready to search something because it's totally normal (laughs) like is anybody ever just sitting there on their computer (laughs) he's like i'm gonna google but then i don't know we don't have hold on uh i'm gonna google (laughs) like uh so brutal (laughs) but anyway watch the documentary recommended it is pretty good Yeah. yeah. Okay. So uh, I believe Horizon is has that. Doesn't there's a lot of uh, Bitcoin Cash has it. Nano, like a lot of them have SMS mm-hmm. crypto capabilities uh, yeah, built onto them now. Be relevant for <clears throat> sure. <clears throat> and uh, remember, we covered a story on our Friday flagship where it was a story that the Chinese government was trying to suppress. So somebody just put it into an Ethereum transaction. I love that shit. Like, that's so cool. You know, like, that they try to, you know, the government's trying to block something, and then we have this way of being like, no, you literally can't block information from spread. I, I love that. Yep. That's always been one of the exciting things. I want to see that documentary. They have a documentary that was released on, like, the, the Chinese Netflix of a woman trying to survive for 21 days on, you know, an amount of Bitcoin that she could have clearly mm-hmm. survived on, like, Fiat dollars worth? It, no, it was, I don't even know if it was that much. It, it was. It might have been though. I, I don't remember. Yeah, I think. I think it was thirteen hundred in fiat, roughly at the time. <clears throat> it was you know point I mean? zero two one. Bitcoin, Three weeks is a long time for Bitcoin to go down. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so she's like week one. I'm homeless. Week two. <laughs> I've bought a condo. Week three. I had to sell the condo. <laughs> week three. Back on the streets. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so let's open it up a little bit. Is there any questions that any of the listeners have? Anybody yeah, want to yeah, hop on the voice? Uh, we didn't. We kind of forgot to introduce ourselves this time around. But if there's any questions about yeah. who we are, I guess it's better late than never. Uh, we kind of did a quick, quick introduction. We're like uh, three funny guys that talk about crypto. That uh... anything we missed? Anything you guys want to talk about? Any questions? Any uh, any funny nicknames that we could give Brent? Anything like that? Come on, and anybody. <laughs> we we try to save the last ten minutes for. Yep, yep. We I, I see some typing activity. I'm not going to contribute to it so that it doesn't say several people are typing. <laughs> Which is you know that's always uh. It's the little things, man. <laughs> it's always exciting. The. Hey, hey guys, I have a question. So. How much did the pirate pay for his peg and hook? Oh no, stop it. <laughs> it cost him an arm and a leg. Ugh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it was international talk like a pirate day a few days ago. Apparently. Oh, th- uh, this looks like it's way this looks like it's one of the things that we put on the back burner for there was here. Yeah, no, this was the um there was some sort of bug in the bitcoin code and i do not know nearly enough about this to report on it but basically they they figured something out i don't know i this is i wish that i could i could comment on this and feel like i wasn't just making shit up but this is the (laughs) kind of thing that uh the claim is there was a bug in bitcoin it was found and it didn't cause too much problem, but it's obviously Bitcoin has a bug that's extremely scary. I I don't know enough at all. So this is this is something that people way more qualified than myself need to talk to talk about. Oh my god. <laughs> Cashman oh. Cash for the win. Yes. Wow. Uh, Cashman's level, question for those of you not paying attention, he has betrayal. If Kareem's sister was a crypto, which one would she be, Brent? All right. Well, it's out there, so I'm going to play. Okay. Uh, so, <laughs> so 
Kareem, <laughs> does your sister watch these particular pieces of the podcast before yes. I answer this? I know she yes. listens to the podcast. I know she, she watches the YouTube. Does she watch the R cryptocurrency things? Yes, possibly. Wow. Ooh, okay, so all right, that's gonna put my first option out the window. Uh, <laughs> let's go. Let's go to Mike on this one while I come up with a second option. I'm honestly like I don't remember meeting your sister. Yeah, you haven't. Neither has Brent. That's the interesting thing about all his my sister. Okay. Because <laughs> he saw her in a picture when I was in high school, and but uh, no, no, no. Uh, look, look, look. Full disclosure. Kareem told me at the time that her type appeared to be chubby white guys. So ever since then, <laughs> okay, I've listen, been like, my ooh. Defense, she has dated back-to-back -back chubby white guys. <laughs> so you tell me that somebody's type is a chubby white guy, and obviously I'm going to be like, sup, girl? Hug for life. Yeah, but anyway, that... that, that uh, I literally have no information ago. other than I, I know stories about parents and i i know kareem i i, I wouldn't have a, any way to make any sort of educated guess here not even an entertaining guess all right i'm gonna go, i'm gonna go with um she would be represented by uh nano nano okay. because it's gonna be at least in her if i were to be with her nano would represent our interaction her. Really fast, really fast speeds, really small uh, things. Nano, I think, really works there. Um, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You might want to tell her to skip this episode because uh, yeah, I was I'll really play. trying to make that not so bad, but I failed. Yeah, that was terrible. All right. Any other questions that involve no family members of anybody? Well, now that it's out there, Kareem, you got to play. Oh, um, let's see. Well, she's my big sister. Um, I guess I would say I have no clue. And you know what? I should have picked Stellar. Oh. Aww. <laughs> All right. Can we stop letting Brent write love letters to my sister on this, guys? Can we please? It's okay. Uh, Much apologies to... Cream sister, if you're listening, uh, we, we mean respectful things. <laughs> All right, we got if you were listening, I'm, I'm just, I can't believe anybody listens. Uh, also, Kareem sister, I do handle the podcast emails. So if you want to reach out to me, crypto basic podcast <laughs> at gmail.com. You know what, Brent? I'll make sure I'll let her know directly just in case she doesn't <laughs> listen that she can reach out to you at crypto basic email.com. <laughs> <laughs> Oh jeez. Okay, yeah, so uh that was in that was interesting. <laughs> I think we uh we have a a 5 minute window or a early By the uh, way, would quick shout out to Spankcoin. We I'm not going to let all this Spankcoin talk go to waste without giving a shout out there. Yeah, if Spank chain in please. In in Spank block, uh you guys can check out Brent actually interviewed Spank chain. <laughs> block string. <laughs> <laughs> All right, <laughs> break string. If you want to check out Spank, you want to check spank Break, <laughs> Spank Next Break Chain. We did a one on one on it. Uh, Brent interviewed one of the one of the cam girls. I was in there too, buddy. That was that was our only three way crypto combo. Yeah, imagine that. And Mike wanted to make sure that was a three way combo. <laughs> that that yeah. that was that, those are actually pretty cool. So it, yeah, it was a crypto related chat, but also. We were talking with a cam model, so there was some interesting information there. It was uh We talked a lot about mass adoption. Yep. Yeah, mass adoption would be great. So uh, try to get you know more fat guy approval. Yeah. Spank Spank Chain is a little little pet project of mine. Can't really recommend anybody uh invest in it, but I remembered really liking the the way they did their ICO. If you listen to that episode, it's kinda cool the way they did it. It wasn't uh yeah, they, standard. They made it point six nine and Brent's so excited. No, no, no. They but that was their minimum, but like they, they did it like a bid system <laughs> rather than just saying you get this many coins for this much Ethereum. So it really was more true to what the market was interested in rather than what they could just drum up. Which is great because with the market full of irrational investors, gamifying it sounded like a really good idea. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I, I think – I haven't checked in a long time, but I think I'm still up on Spank, which is 
you know, very for any coin that I invested in around that time is not even close to possible. So I think they're like the only one that I'm still uh, still positive on from Must that nice. period. <laughs> It's a good, good project. We even got a shout out to them when we did the Loom episode. Uh, the uh, or not, I'm not the Loom episode, but when we talked to James Duffy, he he randomly worked in a spank chain shout out for just because he's like, hey, yo, those guys are doing good work, and we're like, I know, I like those guys. <laughs> Quite literally, a small world. Yep. Up, oh, crypto basic Kareem is typing. Oh, I was responding to Elliot. He was being all decent and polite. I want to tell him no. Everything was good. <laughs> uh, you know, you know, Brent stuff you wouldn't mm, know about. Yeah, Polite listen, society. guys, uh, K- Kareem, Mike, and I have been friends for a very long time. I have been making Kareem's sister comments for minimum ten years. So <laughs> don't don't worry. We we've gotten past the awkward phase. This is the first time we've compared her to a cryptocurrency, but uh, but yeah. All right. Any Definitely other questions? the first time she's been cheap and fast, though. No, uh, Stellar. I should have gone with Stellar. I was the cheap and fast was supposed to be a knock on me, but uh, mm. it, well, the small and fast was supposed to be a knock on me. It, but uh, it, you know, it didn't didn't come across that way. Yeah. I'm so sorry. <laughs> yeah. I'm Bat- I'm so sorry. <laughs> batting a hundred. <laughs> so just in case you guys are wondering, I know all of you right now sitting by your computer are thinking, when am I gonna get? to listen to Brent's fantastic jokes again. The answer is going to be next Tuesday at 11 a.m. Same place and time. Brent, are you going to bring your A game again? Are you going to bring your... Always. I always bring my A game. It's always... You should see his A-plus game. It's really amazing. It's 5 p.m. now, though. Yes, and that was 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time because that's the only thing that matters. America! Mm. Sorry, sorry. Yes. Next Tuesday at 11 a.m. for me. So do your own research. Figure out when that is for you. And uh, we would love to see you next week. All right. I, I'm, I'm All good. Right. If there's no other questions, I am good to wrap it up. But if somebody wants to put us in a... If, if, if we miss anything, TiVo, record it and give it to us next week. <laughs> the... <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thanks, everybody, for being a part of this. Uh, and if you want to share this with people for whatever reason, it'll be on YouTube shortly. Um, I SGP uploads that wait, wait, pretty quickly. Nice, nice. I have an answer for you. When Moon. We just recorded an episode titled Roundtable When Moon. So we have an answer for you. Go find it. CryptoBasicPodcast.com. Yep. It's not what you're thinking, though. It's, no, but it, it, There's literally no crypto content in the episode whatsoever, but it is titled When Moon. All right, guys. Peace out. All right. Thanks again, uh, SGP, for all your help. We appreciate you. We are not financial advisors. We're idiots. Please do your own research. All investments have inherent risk.